Paramahansa Parivrakachari Sotar Sudashi Shimad, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananikodi Vaishnava Vindi Ki Jai, Namachar Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Premisakoho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Adveda Gadadara Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vindi Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nath Shamakunda Radha Kunda Giri Govadani Ki Jai Vandavan Dhamma Ki Jai Navadweet Dhamma Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Tulasi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vindi Ki Jai Gorpi Manandi Hari Bhod All Glory Assembled Devotees All Glory Assembled Devotees All Glory Assembled Devotees all glory to Shi Shi Guru and Goranga. Glory to Shil Prabhupada. Does somebody know how to turn this light on? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, second a canto, chapter 1, verse 16. Grihat Pravrajito Dira Punya Tirta Jalap Lutaha Shuchao Evicta Asino Vidivat Kapitasane Grihat Pravrajito Dira Punya Tirta Jalap Lutaha Shuchavi Vivikta An Asino Vidivat kalpistasane Grihat pravrachito dira Punya tir chava valap lutaha Shu chav vivikta asino Vidivat kalpita sane Grihat pravrachito dira Punya tirta Punya tirta jalap lutaha Shucha vivikta asino Vidivat kapita sane. Someone could chant.
Mighty Chiefs. Word for word. Grihat from one's home. Pravajitaha having gone out. Diraha self controlled. Punya pious. Tirta sacred place. Jala up, uh, see, Jala. A plataha, fully washed. Shuchao, cleansed. Vivikte, solitary. Asinaha, seated. Vidivat, according to regulations. Kalpita, Having done. Asane on a sitting place. Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Translation One should leave home and practice self control. In a sacred place, he should bathe regularly and sit down in a lonely place duly sanctified. Purport. To please, to, uh, to prepare oneself for the better next life, one must get out of one's so-called home. The system of Varnashram Dharma, or Sanatana Dharma, prescribes retirement from family encumbrances as early as possible after one has passed 50 years of age. Modern civilization is based on family comforts, the highest standard of amenities, and therefore, after retirement, everyone expects to live a very comfortable life in a well-furnished home decorated with fine ladies and children without any desire to get out of such a comfortable home. High government officers and ministers stick to their prized posts until death, and they neither dream nor desire to get out of homely comforts. Bound by such hallucinations, materialistic men prepare various plans for a still more comfortable life. But suddenly, cruel death comes without mercy and takes away the great plan maker against his desire, forcing him to give up the present body for another body. Such a plan maker is thus forced to accept another body and out in, in one of the 8,400,000 species of life according to the fruits of the work he has performed. In the next life, persons who are too much attached to family comforts are generally awarded lower species of life on account of sinful acts performed during a long duration of sinful life and thus, all the energy of the human life is spoiled. In order to be saved from the danger of spoiling the human form of life and being attracted to unreal things, one must take warning of death at the age of 50, if not earlier. The principle is that one should take it for granted 
that death, that the death warning is already there, even prior to the attainment of 50 years of age. And thus, at any stage of life, one should prepare himself for a better next life. The system of the, Var of the Sanatana Dharma Institution is so made that the follower is trained for the better next life without any chance that the human life will be spoiled. The holy places all over the world are meant for the residential purposes of retired persons getting ready for a better next life. Intelligent persons must go, must go there at the end of life and for that matter after 50 years of age to live a life of spiritual regeneration for the sake of being freed from family attachment which, which is considered to be the shackle to be the shackle of material life. One is recommended to quit home just to get rid of material attachment because one who sticks to family life until death cannot get rid of material attachment and as long as one is materially attached one cannot understand spiritual freedom. One should not however become self-complacent simply by leaving home by creating another home at a holy place either lawfully or unlawfully. Many persons leave home and go to such holy places but due to bad association again become family men by illicit connection with the opposite sex. The illusory energy of matter is so strong that one is, is apt to be under such illusion at every stage of life even after quitting one's happy home. Therefore it is essential that one practice self-control by celibacy without the least desire for sex indulgence. For a man desiring to improve the condition of his existence, sex indulgence is considered suicidal or even worse. Therefore, to live apart from family life means to become self-controlled in regard to all sense desires especially sex desires. The method is that one should have a duly sanctified sitting place made of straw, deer skin, and carpet, and thus sitting on it, one should chant the holy name of the Lord without offense, as prescribed above. The whole process is to drag the mind from material engagements and fix it on the lotus feet of the Lord. This simple process alone will help one advance to the highest stage of spiritual success. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Bastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvase Sasunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarani So we have come here to this material world because we wanted to enjoy the material or to lord over or enjoy the material energy. And therefore we are giving this material body to try to enjoy that material nature. Although this is actually against our real nature, in the beginning it stated that of this before we fell down that Krishna tried to protect us from the trap but because we were determined he let us come to this material world to try, try to enjoy uh, in, by engaging in sense gratification. So in this way we came to this material world trying to enjoy society, friendship and love in a perverted way uh, because everything in the spiritual world is here in the material world but it's here in a perverted as a perverted reflection just like it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita 
that there is a banyan tree which has its fruits upward, branches upwards, its roots upwards and its branches downwards, and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who understands his tree is the knower of the Vedas. So this banyan tree, this upside down banyan tree is there in the reflection of a pool of water. So this is the, uh, this reflection, uh, this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. Uh, the original, uh, in the spiritual world, there is eternity, knowledge, and bliss. And it's perverted, ref it's perverted re reflected in the material world as the modes of material nature. In this way, uh, we suffer accordingly by our desires and by our activities. So this attachment, uh, this attachment in the home uh, is people who are attached, they, they are, if they're not attached to Krishna, we have to have some attachment, we have to have some desire. If we're not attached to Krishna, then we have to have attachment to material things. And the problem with that is that it keeps us here in, this, in, in the material world. And by engaging in material activities and by engaging in sinful activities, then we become more and more degraded. So originally we came into this material world, as mentioned in the Bhagavatam, as Lord Brahma. But then gradually we, we, we fell down and we came lower and lower and to such a position as uh, becoming into the lower species of life. So by engaging in sinful activities, one accepts a lower life form. Although one is attached to one's home, one could go back to one's home, but in a lower species of life. Just like probably gave the example of somebody, they're attached to their skyscraper building, but they come back as a roach in the toilet. So their son is, is worshiping them, is offering them respect in their picture, but they are simply a roach in the toilet. Or one is very much attached to becoming uh, attached to one's house, and once it was one tree next to a house, and probably mentioned how that's, that, that's the former owner of this house. He's attached, but now he becomes a tree. So they become, they become trees because they're of their attachment, of their sinful activities. Just like Prabhupada mentioned about John Lennon, uh, because he, he, he shows himself as naked, uh, he, he, he had a picture of himself being naked, uh, therefore, Prabhupada said in his next life he will become a tree. So this is the situation of those who engage in sinful life. And those who want to enjoy the modes of material nature, because everything in the material world is composed of the three modes of material nature, so by coming in contact with those modes, we become contaminated. So those who are, when Prabhupada was in Hawaii, he was, uh, he has asked what are those people, you know, on the, on the, riding the waves, and he said, oh, they're surfers, and Prabhupada says, I, I, I call them sea sufferers. They're suffering in the sea. So Prabhupada said, because they like to swim and dance in the ocean, then in the next life, they'll become fishes. And in this way, they'll miss the opportunity, the human form of life, and it will take them millions of years to come back to the human form of life. They'll be in the ocean. There's so many thousands, hundreds and thousands of species of fish and then after they become fish, they come up, come up into the land and become plants. And this way, there are so many uh, species that they have to go through. So Darwin also, he presented this evolution. Sometimes it's stated that he took uh, information from the Vedas. Uh, you know, that the, the first there was some kind of water all around the world and then there were some fishes and then they gradually came out of the water and they're different plants or whatever. Anyway, but this is, this is according to this, but we understand things as the spirit soul accepts different types of bodies, not an evolution of material forms. It's an evolution of the soul from one body to another. So first he's in the, the species of fishes and then he goes to the plant life and then he gradually comes up to the human form of life. 
So in this way, people are attached to their house, to their home. And Prabh mentions in the purport about the politicians, how they, they don't want to give up their position. They can't even dream about giving up their position. And Shiva Prabhupada himself even requested different, he, well, he, he requested Mahatma Gandhi to, he's, he said, Mahatma Gandhi, you're very famous, uh, you're known over the world, give up your, your, uh, your politics and simply, uh, you know, help join me and, and, and preach Bhagavad Gita. But he refused to do it. He simply, he wanted to go on with his political career and probably mentioned to him that if you don't give, it, give, give, give this up, you'll simply meet the same uh, destination as Mussolini and Hitler. You'll just simply be killed. And actually, it came to pass that he was actually shot. And, and, uh, and Prabhupada also mentions about uh, Nehru, who is the first president of India. Uh, he became, he, he, he continued to, to, to the end of his death. I think Prabhupada mentioned he had a heart attack. and he was, Anyway, he was going to some meeting and he died. So Prabhupada mentions about Nehru that he, he's one of two dogs uh, and I think either Sweden or Switzerland. So that's the position. They, because of their sinful activities, because of their attachment, they take birth in the lower species of life. So in this material world, uh, there's danger at every step. This is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 14. Sama Shrita Ye pada palava plavam mahat padam punya yasho marari bavam bhutir vatsa padam param padam 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 yati padam natesham. For one who's accepted the boat of the lotus feet of the Lord, who is a shelter of the cosmic manifestation and it is known as Morari, the enemy of the Muru demon. The ocean of material existence is like the water contained in a calf's hoofprint. His goal is Param Padam, Vaikuntha, the place where there are no material miseries, not the place where there is danger and fear at every step. So the, this material world is not meant for the devotees of the Lord. They have nothing to do with this useless place. So this material world is full of danger, full of fear, and the ultimate fear is death. This is something that no one can avoid, and everybody's fearful at every moment. But actually, if we understand things properly, uh, there is no actual danger it is simply a dream. Prabhupada gave the example of a man is dreaming and he is dreaming of a tiger and he is being eaten by the tiger and he is crying out, help, help. But actually there is no tiger. It is simply a dream. And for the devotees of the Lord, uh, actually there is no danger. Sometimes the devotees appear to be uh, in danger, just like, just like the Pandavas. The Pandavas, they were in a house that was set on fire. They were attacked by man-eaters. Uh, they were banished to the forest for so many years. But actually, this was just to uh, make it so that Krishna could uh, speak, be famous as a speaker of the Bhagavad Gita. But actually, the devotees, they're never in any danger. They're ne never in any suffering because they are always remembering Krishna's lotus feet. And they understand that the nature of this world is simply temporary and is simply a dream. So, in the material world, people have so many sufferings, uh, but the real suffering is birth, death, disease, and old age. All the other, uh, the other so-called sufferings are simply temporary. Secondary sufferings is simply temporary. So in this world, 
uh, these temporary things are, are people take these uh, very seriously. Although they, they, they neglect the real problems, they take the secondary things as very, very seriously. What are these uh, secondary problems or some of these secondary problems? Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. These are their secondary problems. But these are the simply the, the, the how do you say, the, uh, the activities of the animals. So simply, the, that's their main concern. Simply the activities of the animals. So this is referred to as priority marg, eating, sleeping, mating, eating, uh, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, and nivriti marg, which is to give up these things. So those who are in spiritual life, they engage in the principle of renunciation, which this purport describes, giving up the home, renunciation, or nirvriti marg, uh, giving up eating, sleeping, mating, defending. So we see the devotees, they do that. Uh, just like Raghunath Das Goswami. He was from a very rich family. Uh, he had a very nice wife. Uh, but he gave up everything and joined Lord Chaitanya's movement. So, and, and as far as eating, that was practically nil. He would just eat, uh, eat a little butter every three days. So in this way, uh, he, he, he engaged in Krishna consciousness. And by doing this, by engaging in, in Krishna consciousness, we can make these things nil. But we, if we do it artificially, if we simply want to avoid things without engaging in activities of Krishna consciousness, then we'll be a fail, failure. We have to have some attachment. We have to have some anchor. Just like probably gave the example, they're going to the moon, they're going to the sun, but they are simply thinking just like the Russians, they were, they were up in outer space and they were thinking, where's my Moscow? Where's my Moscow? So their anchor or their attachment is in uh, their city or their country or their family or their wife. So that attachment is there. They're going up very high in the sky, but their anchor is down on this planet. Just like the example given of the the vulture, he's going very, very high, but his, his, the point of him going very, very high is he's trying to find out a dead body. So our advancement of going very high is simply to find out a dead body, simply a decoration of a dead body. Because what are these bodies? They're simply dead matter. They're simply moving because the spirit soul is in them. So we are thinking that this is a nice body, that's not a nice body, and we are attracted in so many ways. But we should understand this body is simply bile, mucus, and air, that's all. Simply material elements. There's no real happiness in these material things. It's simply a dead body. So we shouldn't be engaged in these uh, material things. Uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't simply engage in eating, sleeping, maining, defending. This is not civilization. People who emphasize these things is just simply polished animal life, just like the dog. The dog is eating in the street, and we're eating on a golden plate, but the business is the same. The taste is the same. When we are sleeping in the 20th floor of a skyscraper building, but, and the dog is sleeping in the street, but this, the business is the same. And the dog is engaged in sex life in the street, and we are engaging sex life in a solitary place and a nice bed step, but, this, but business is the same, the taste is the same. So this is not actually human life, this is simply animal life. Not that we, we don't do these things, but this is not our primary goal in life. These are simply secondary things. We just try to minimize these things and engage our time in advancing in Krishna consciousness. So to do this, uh, we have to get out of the material world. Uh, to get out of this material world is only possible for the devotees of the Lord. Others in this, in this material world, they find, actually they find that things are very inconvenient for them. They're always under the control of material nature. They're always under somebody's control. 
and they, they very much uh, dislike this, just like the story is given of the ass. The ass was very sad that he was always working hard for his master. So he, made it, he, he called the conference together of all the animals. So all the, all, all the animals came, and then the elephant spoke up and said, even though I'm very strong, even I am controlled by my master. So the ass could understand that uh, it is simply useless. We cannot uh, get out of the control of our masters. So it's not possible to get out of the control of material nature. Only by surrendering unto Krishna, as, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, daivi yesha gunamayi mamamaya daratyaya mamevaye prapadyante mayame tantarantite. This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is very difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So by surrendering unto Krishna, uh, one could conquer over material nature. One could conquer over death. So one could conquer over death by engaging in the, in the process, different processes of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padmasavanam. One can conquer over death by Shruti Parayana, by hearing the Vedas from a self-realized soul. In this way, one can conquer over death. So, by hearing from the spiritual master, by engaging in devotional service, one could cross over the modes of material nature. So one of these processes is to chant the holy name of the Lord. It's mentioned in the purport here again about one should sit, on, sit down in a secluded place, place and chant the holy name of the Lord without offense. So there are various offenses that one should avoid. Uh, one should avoid uh, blasphemy in the devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord. Uh, because if one blasphemes the devotee, if one uh, offends the devotee, then uh, Krishna will not forgive him. Uh, you one may blaspheme the Lord, he, he, he can forgive one. But if one blasphemes a devotee, then he cannot be forgiven. Just like the example is given of Maharaj Ambarish and Durvasa Muni. Durvasa Muni offended Maharaj Ambarish Maharaj, and he was chastised by Krishna's Sudarshana chakra. In this way, he had to f flee from the chakra throughout the whole universe until they went to Vaikuntha. And he tried to get pardon from Lord Vishnu and Vishnu said, I can't help you. The only way you could be relieved is by surrendering uh, to Ambarish Maharaj to ask forgiveness from him. So in this way, when we have to be very careful to blast, uh, not to blaspheme the devotees of the Lord. And another offense is to consider the names of the demigods to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. So uh, they say that the Hindus have many gods, but uh, we don't, we, we're not into this Hindu or Muslim. We say uh, we have to worship Krishna. And you can't be, God is one. If there's two gods, it's not God. God is one. And, but the Mayavadi sometimes they misinterpret the Bhagavad Gita as in the 14th, 4th chapter, 11th verse, it says, uh, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. So they take this to mean uh, many gods. And, and even in, in America, they have a branch of this Mayavadi philosophy. They, have, they, they say you could worship anyone, you could worship Kali, and the result is the same. No, the result is not the same. Krishna says, Ishvara Parma Krishna, Satchitan, or Lord Brahma says, Ishvara Parma Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govindam, Sarvakarna Karnam. Krishna, who is known as the Govinda, is the supreme controller. He has an eternal, blissful spiritual body. He is the origin of all. Who he has no other origin, for he's, a for he's a prime cause of all causes. So there's only one God, and that God is Krishna, and we simply have to uh, worship him. Another offense is to disobey the order of the spiritual master. So 
uh, one has to follow the instruction of the spiritual master verbatim. Uh, there, uh, there, uh, otherwise, uh, if one doesn't, then such acceptance of a spiritual master is, is uh, the practice of hypocrisy. So one has to accept someone who one, one could have faith in that he knows the absolute truth. Therefore, it's sometimes it's stated that one should, uh, for, for a while, the spiritual master should uh, test the disciple and the, and the disciple should uh, see if the spiritual master is qualified to be accepted as a spiritual master. And we also, uh, one of the offenses is to not to accept the Vedic literature. So we have to accept the Vedic literature, even though sometimes it, same, same things may seem to be contradictory. Like some is mentioned in the Vedas that the animal, the bone of an animal is impure. If you touch a bone of an animal, you have to take a bath. But then it's stated that the conch shell is pure. So in this way, th things may, see com may seem contradictory, but we have to accept them with faith. Otherwise, we are committing offenses. Another uh, offense is to chant the holy name of the Lord for material gain. And she will probably give the example of, just like I may be making $1,000. And so I'm thinking that if I chant Hare Krishna, I can make $3,000. So this is actually an offense. And he gave the example of Dayananda. He said, uh, even though Dayananda is uh, chanting Hare Krishna, uh, it, it, is seen that, it is seen that he is making less money. But even though one is making less money, uh, one should uh, simply go on chanting Hare Krishna. So that's not the goal of, of chanting Hare Krishna to make money. It doesn't matter if one makes millions of dollars or becomes poverty stricken, one should simply chant Hare Krishna because that's the real benefit in this human form of life. So we have to chant Hare Krishna. We have to chant regularly 16 rounds a day without fail. Uh, one morning walk, Sri Prabhupada mentions if one can't finish one's rounds and the next day one must make them up. Uh, Without eating and sleeping, one must finish one's rounds. And then he also mentioned in Hawaii in, in a conversation it was in 19, it says, it says uh, undated or unknown date, but then it mentions 1970, February. And it probably was talking about some devotees, they were into uh, teaching how to play tennis and they had some kind of uh, professional thing going on. And, and they were talking about chanting and chanting rounds and things. And probably mentioned there that if you're busy and you can't chant all your rounds, he gave an example, like say one day you can't chant, you only chant 12 rounds that day. So the next day, he said you must chant 20 rounds. That is the rule. So in this way, we have to chant. Sometimes we may be very busy, we may be have a festival, something's going on, it it's becomes very difficult to channel our rounds. But if we don't channel our rounds, we just can't chant, uh, we only chant 12, the next day we have to chant 20, or you say, well, I can chant any rounds. Well, next, next day you have to chant 32 rounds. So we have to chant. We have to continue our, our, our promises to our spiritual master. And also it's very important uh, to chant in the temple, uh, this was brought up the other day. Uh, this was mentioned by Prabhupada. And it was a mor on a morning walk on the 15th of April in 1976 that uh, by chanting the temple, uh, it has a, it's a thousand times greater to chant in the temple than outside. Probably they gave the example, just like in Vindavan, they go to Vindavan because things are increased. So in this way, just by chanting the temple, uh, one, one, the potency of the, of the, the Hare Krishna mantra is actually increased. But, and also uh, another, 
another also probably mentions about inattentive chanting. I want to bring that up too. Inattentive chanting probably says if you if one is inattentive in chanting the holy name of the Lord, then uh, one should chant louder so one could hear. But one should be also take the instruction that a japa is mentioned in, in the nectar of devotion that japa is chanted softly. So one shouldn't chant very loudly, so loud that it's difficult for other devotees to hear their rounds. Just like sometimes I, I'm in back in the Bajari rooms and I could hear uh, devotees, some devotees chanting their japa all the way from to the Bajari room. So one has to chant softly so, when, so everybody could hear their rounds, especially if there's a lot of devotees chanting in the temple. So we have to spread Krishna consciousness by engaging these activities. Uh, we have to defeat the demons because the, the demons and the demigods, they've been fighting since time immemorial. This has been going on for a very, very long time. Uh, there's, but now there's different names. They have different names. She probably gave them different names. He said they're, it's a capitalist and the communists, the demons and the demigods. So, but of course, and he said, if he said, of course, in the West now, the, the capitalists, they're 80%, 90% demons. So, because they, 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 they don't know about the Vedic scriptures, they don't know about, about the orders of God. But we have a very good chance, probably, we have a very good chance of, of changing things in America uh, by making them Krishna conscious in this way. Uh, we could very easily uh, change the whole world and, and uh, wage uh, the war against the real demons like that. So by the Sankatan movement, by distributing Krishna consciousness in the form of the Vedic literatures, by chanting the holy name of the Lord, and by introducing this Varnashrama system, as mentioned here in the purport, one could change the course of the world and then the whole world will become Krishna consciousness. And there will be no shortage. The, the re only reason why there is shortage in the world because of lack of Krishna consciousness. Just like the people say, oh, there's overpopulation. Uh, because of overpopulation, there will be a lack of food. No, there's not lack of food because of overpopulation. The, the reason why if there's a uh, lack of food because of, uh, if there's a lack of food, the reason is because it's a godless society. Krishna, material nature will withhold food if, there's a, uh, if there are demons on the planet. Just like when Maharaj Prithu was on the planet, Mother Earth was keeping things within her because so many people were gauging against the principles of God like that. So we could stop there. Are there any questions on these points? Yes, uh, Charan Rotem. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you very much. That was a very wonderful presentation. <clears throat> very clear. Uh, <clears throat> you were mentioning how the politicians, uh, uh, they are godless, so they are no Krishna consciousness. Uh, you will mention the example of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. How Mahatma Gandhi, outside in the material world, uh, they, they praise him as to be a saintly person, but actually we know he's not a saintly person. He is, is just a politician. So my, my point is, my question comes now. So we have this Tulsi Garbar, which is a candidate for the United States to be a president, but we know that to deal with the material world, with the material nature is very, is very tough. The three most of material nature. So unless someone is very strong, like Prabhupada, like a, like a very strong Acharya, that to be in that position, for sure, it, it won't be contaminated because, you know, it, but this person that everybody, you know, the devotees are praising her, so she got to make negotiations, she got to deal with demons, no demons, communists, wars, this and that. How strong she will be in her Krishna consciousness and, 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 and to, to give the message of Krishna if she takes that position. 
think, considering that it's very, it's very strong, the material nature, and, and to be in that politician real is very heavy. How she can, how she can be fully, fully surrendered or fully, fully loyal to Prabhupada or, or, or to the teachings of the Vedas? Well, the thing is with becoming like a president, for example, Prabhupada mentions that even if you become a president yourself, what could you do? Because the Congress is against you. So the president may say so many things, he may say, close the slaughterhouses, and they'll simply laugh at you. So the Congress, they, they're in charge, they write all the rules, so there's nothing you can really do. So it has to be more than just a president. It has to be the whole country. And this is done by making the people Krishna conscious. So not only do they have to elect a president who's Krishna conscious, but they have to elect a Congress as is Krishna conscious. And then things could actually go on nicely. But simply doing one little thing here or one little thing there will make some effect. But after, if we actually want to make uh, the real effect, we have to uh, make the people in the whole world Krishna, or let's say in America, if you do something great in America, the whole world will follow. So we have to preach Krishna consciousness among the mass of people and then they'll be able to elect the proper people to guide them. Otherwise, if they're simply hogs, dogs, camels, and asses, they'll simply elect another big hog, dog, camel, or ass. Okay, so it's getting a little late now, so we could stop there. Thank you very much. All glory to Shishi, Guru, and Goranga.